everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. This week, we are going to start talking about loops in JavaScript. And loops um, are super handy for executing the same block of code or the same action over and over again, or in certain circumstances, uh, without taking up a ton of code space and without being super complicated. So there are several types of loops um, in JavaScript and in a lot of programming languages. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about the for loop. And as you can see right here, this is a basic anatomy of a for loop. I'll break it down and then we'll get into an example to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So there are three sections of the conditional for a for loop before the code to execute. So when you're writing a for loop, you do for, and then this um, is used here to initialize your loop. Basically, you are setting a variable, typically like a increment variable, um, and this executes just once at the beginning of the loop. The second section here um, is like the condition. So it's like, do this for this long or in these conditions. So um, a lot of times you'll see it like this is set to zero and then while this is less than, you know, the total number you want, do this. And then the adjust, this comes after our conditional. This is what to execute after each iteration of this code. And it's usually like an increment. It'll count up our initializing variable. So I'm going to get right into it and show you what I mean here. So this is pretty much the same page that we had when we were changing our box color. It doesn't do anything now. It's just a button and a div. And in our JavaScript, um, we fetch our button and our div um, and just give them shortcut names. Um, we probably wouldn't even need to use button here because we set the on click in our HTML, but we could get the button and change it over here. Um, anyway, and then um, this array of colors should be the same as uh, when we were using a switch statement to loop through for our div. But we are going to use the same array and just loop through it to display everything in the list down here. So our function is going to be a loop in it. So again, we start with four and execute our code. So four. Our initializer is just going to be i equals zero. And this can be whatever you want. i is usually um, what people set. I don't know if it's index or increment or what, but i equals zero. We could do whatever. We could do x equals zero. Um, but I'm going to do i. We're going to run this for loop while i is less than, and I want the number of items, or I guess the index in my array. So zero, one, two, three, and four. So while it's less than five, so it'll stop when it reaches five. And then we're going to add one to our i initializer every time. And this here, this plus plus, um, is just an increment operator in JavaScript. It just means add one to whatever i already is. OK, so we're going to initialize it at 0, go while it's less than 5, and add up every single time. So after each code execution, we're going to add one and continue through the loop. It'll check if it's less than 5 and continue. So. Um, the code that we want, uh, we want to get our box. Actually, we're going to set our inner HTML. Um, and I'm going to do, OK, this is another new operator. Um, this is just a new concatenation. So rather than just setting our HTML equal to something, we are going to add on to what's already there. So it'll, it should each iteration add, add one. So instead of replacing, if we just did equal, it would probably just jump to the last one. We're going to um, concatenate them. So we get a list. Um, OK, so I want each one to be a paragraph. Um, and we'll concatenate the color we are on. And I'm going to toss this i variable in here because whatever this is equal to then will correspond to the position in my array. So the first one will be this first position. It's going to increment up, and then it'll be the next one, and so on. Um, and then I'm going to just concatenate the ending paragraph tag. Save this. And we should be in business over here. All right, there we go. To make this a little more interesting, I'm going to hop into this paragraph tag here and give it a style. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do style equals, and then I'm gonna do single quotes here because I'm using double quotes um, to get into my HTML. We did this a little bit last week, but this is how you kind of jump back and forth between your JavaScript code and your HTML. So style, we're gonna do background color, colon, and then I want this to be the color we are on in our array actually. So I'm gonna, how am I gonna do this? Put a double quote here. It, I'm using Adam so it automatically finishes it here for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put my concatenators in here so I know to, after this JavaScript in here, I'm gonna jump back into my HTML. So I'm gonna do the same thing and add the color that we are on. So it'll be the text in the paragraph, but the background color should be the color that corresponds to the text. Okay, I'm gonna save this. We'll see if this listens to me, here we go. It works, it doesn't look super nice, so I might add a couple other styles here. So background color is colors, and then this is still inside of the style here. So I'm just gonna add a couple more. Let's do some padding. I'm just gonna do 10 pixels. Um, let me see if I, and let's just make the text color white. And let's make the font size a little bit bigger. Okay, save this, refresh our page. Okay, what did I do, what did I do? Okay, I think what I just need to do is put a semicolon after my background color rule. It gets a little complicated here because, I mean, I could break it up by line, but it doesn't, you know, the text editor reads it funny if I do it that way. Okay, so, Yep, that worked. Okay, so now they just look better. Um, and actually, I'm gonna introduce just another something. Instead of putting a hard-coded number right here, we can actually incorporate um, something called a, an array length property. It's just built into JavaScript. So um, you just put the name of your array dot length, and this gets whatever the length of the array that you're naming is. So if I refresh this, it should do the same thing. And this is nice because I can change my array to you know, a different length. I'm gonna add orange and pink, save that, and it still works because instead of this being hard-coded to five, where if I had it hard-coded to five, it would, it would stop after those iterations. So by using the array length property, we can change it and it will still go ahead and get it. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I um, hope you found this helpful. Go ahead and give it a like if you did. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more Web Dev Wednesday. As the name of the series suggests, I do post new videos every Wednesday. So I will see you all next week. Bye, you guys.